Um, so yeah, so what I wanted to do with this presentation is um, kind of introduce you a bit about to Mars exploration and the reasons why we are sending all these rovers and landers and orbiters to Mars and um, essentially what all this exploration can kind of do for us. And so to start the tale, I thought I would tell you a bit about my own journey to Mars in a way. So I'm sure as you can tell by my accent, I was born and raised in the UK. Um, and when I was very little, I decided I wanted to be an explorer. And that's mostly because I played a lot of PlayStation and in particular Tomb Raider. I thought Lara Croft was really cool. She'd travel around the world, explore ancient ruins and uncover the ancient mysteries of our civilizations. But as I went through school, I realized that human history is actually not that long relative to how long the world Earth has been around. The Earth formed about four and a half billion years ago, and we've only existed as um, Homo sapiens for a couple of million years. So I became more interested in geosciences than archaeology, um, where geosciences is the science of the Earth, the science of rocks. And I started my undergraduate degree at Royal Holloway University of London with a year of study at the University of Toronto. And so why study rocks? Well, rocks hold the secrets of planets. So for example, volcanoes bring up molten rock from deep within the earth. And so studying volcanoes and looking at lava um, can tell you about what's going on in the interiors of planets. Um, consequently, when those volcanoes have formed and they've been around for a long time, um, you eventually get rain and snow and wind will blow on it and all of these weather and climate processes will break down the rock into mud, sand and pebbles and transport it away from the volcano um, via rivers and deposit them in places like lakes or you can get them deposited from glaciers once they melt. Um, and so if you study these rocks that form from the mud, sand and pebbles, you can um, understand what environment they originally formed in and were deposited in. Um, and the other good thing about rocks, in terms of ancient secrets and other civilizations, is they can tell you about what creatures were once alive. You have fossils preserved in the rocks. This is how we know about dinosaurs and about other things that came before we did. Um, so after embarking on a degree in geology, um, I realized that not only and understanding how rocks form, understanding how to tell between the different environments that the rocks formed in isn't just applicable to this planet, but it's actually applicable to Mars as well. Mars has a lot of rocks there, it's applicable to Venus too if you were to go to Venus. Um, and so in 2015, I embarked on my PhD in um, studying Mars rocks. I became a foreign collaborator of the NASA Curiosity rover science team um, and did my PhD at the Open University, still in the UK. And um, I finished my PhD last year, and I've now moved over here to Houston and the Lunar and Planetary Institute um, to work as part of an effort to better understand Mars by looking at this planet, looking at places on this planet that are similar to Mars, and also to help trial um, different operations procedures to help us incorporate new technologies that's going to be on the mission that just launched this morning. Um, so in order to really understand what Mars can tell us about our own planet, you have to understand the differences between the Earth and Mars first. So looking at this comparative picture, you can very much tell the Earth is a lot bigger than Mars. Um, the Earth clearly has a lot more water on the surface, that's why we're the blue planet, whereas Mars, in comparison, looks pretty dry and dusty and desert-like. Um, another big difference that's pretty important for geology is that the Earth recycles its crust. It has what we call um, plates. Um, the crust is made up of plates on the Earth that move around and jostle about, and sometimes plates will get pushed back into the mantle and recycled. However, Mars doesn't have plates. Um, the crust isn't composed of plates on Mars, so Mars doesn't recycle its crust. And this is important for the time scale of Mars. So this is a comparative timeline between the Ma Mars and the Earth, um, where the numbers are in billions of years. Don't, don't worry about the names um, of the text. But what I want to highlight here is that because of this recycling, most of the Earth's crust form around two billion years and is younger than that. Um, however, from fossils of the few parts of the Earth's crust that are really, really old, we, can we know that life on the Earth formed between four and three and a half billion years ago. 
However, because Mars doesn't have this recycling, this ancient crust is pretty well preserved. And as not much has happened geologically since three billion years, um, at least not in comparison to the Earth, you can go and access this um, pretty well preserved ancient crust. And so this is important for the question in particular of life and the origin of life in the solar system. Um, because if life didn't just originate on the Earth, then it's possible if it originated on Mars too, that we can go back and geological, look through the geological record and get a lot more information from these pristine ancient rocks on Mars' surface. So looking at this ancient crust that's older than 3 billion years old on Mars, you actually see that there's indication Mars is a lot more similar to Earth. For example, you have these channel-like features on the surface that suggest that rivers once flowed there. You have these lovely fan-shaped features that we call delta fans um, that suggest, so these form at the end of river systems when rivers enter into standing water bodies like lakes and oceans. Um, and so there's lots of evidence that potentially life did once, um, life, life could have existed that you have water stable at the surface of Mars. Some more evidence came with the Curiosity rover, landed in Gale Crater in 2012, um, and has explored over 18 kilometers of um, rock record in Gale Crater. And we see all, all of the rocks pretty much in Gale Crater are made up of these mud, sand, and pebble rocks that I spoke about earlier. And we know, looking in closer detail at these rocks, there are features that tell us that these rocks were once made by long-lived river and lake systems. So we know that this river and lake system existed in Gale Crater, so liquid water must have been present. Um, also, there are lots of instruments on the Curiosity rover, and one of them is Kemin. It uses x-rays to tell us what minerals formed in the crust, and some of these minerals that we have detected using Kemin require water to form, such as clays or phyllosilicates. And finally, another bit of evidence that water was present in Gale Crater comes in terms of these features, such as mineral veins. And mineral veins form when you have groundwater circulating in the rock. And so this suggests that not only was this, there this long-lived river and lake system, but water must have been present as groundwater in Gale Crater for a long time, even after the long-lived river and lake system um, dispersed. So the Mars 2020 mission that launched this morning is going to hopefully arrive in February 2021 and its landing site isn't too far from Curiosity's landing site at a place called Jezero Crater and the mission aim of Mars 2020 is to search for signs of past microbial life. Um, and so this is a close-up image of Jezero Crater. You can see, so the circle on this image is the landing ellipse, so it's where the area where Mars 2020 will land. And the colours in this image aren't true colours, they're false colours. The blue represents low elevation and the yellows show high elevation. Um, so it's going to land in this relatively deep basin on this lovely delta fan that I showed you earlier to look for signs of past microbial life. Um, in order to do this, Mars 2020 has a lot of new instrument techniques. Um, which I'll detail to you in a second. Um, and it's also got this lovely Mars helicopter. It's going to be the first time we will have a unmanned aerial spacecraft going around um, the surface of Mars, which will be cool. And it's also got this capacity to collect samples to return to the Earth later on in following missions um, so that we can really look in detail at these rocks on Mars and help us to answer some of these big questions. Um, so some of these new instrument techniques that we have, we've got a radar imager. So previously on the Curiosity rover, we were only able to drill a couple of centimetres into the surface of Mars. But this subsurface radar imager will help us to look um, what's underneath where um, Mars 2020 is going to be roving. So we're going to get a lot more information in terms of what's below the surface. Um, you've also got the SuperCam instrument, which is an upgraded version of the ChemCam instrument that um, I've been a part of on MSL. Um, and SuperCam can give us lots of chemical information. In terms of figuring out life, the Sherlock instrument is going to be um, relatively key for this because this is the ability to de detect and identify organic compounds, um, which Curiosity wasn't able to do um, to the same extent. So Mars 2020, is more of a um, 
robot astrobiologist, whereas MSL Curiosity was more of a robot geologist. So, in conclusion, for Mars exploration, Mars can tell us about how life began on the Earth and in the solar system. This is the big reason why we sent all these missions there. We want to know about the origin of life. Are we really alone? Um, Mars can also, studying Mars exploration, um, it means that we have to look more closely at our own planet. Everything we know about Mars comes from our own research into places similar to Mars on our own world. Um, and so Mars exploration helps to give us more reason to look into these places and these processes, um, in addition to teach, like making us research more about extremophiles, life that lives in extreme environments, to see whether, to understand the limits of life and whether it could exist on Mars. And finally, Mars exploration is the next step in human exploration. And so going to Mars will help, for, help us to forward our own technology in other ways, um, such as radiation shielding and developing means to live in a more sustainable way. So that's everything. That's the end of the talk. Um, and I'm happy to accept any questions. Thank you, Candace. We uh, have a comment here about the height of the rover. Can you tell us a little bit more about how tall that rover really is, the Mars 2020 mm -hmm. rover? I think it's a couple of meters. Um, I'm not sure the exact um, height. However, I know Curiosity was about the same size as a car, as a mm -hmm. small car, and I believe the Mars 2020 rover is pretty similar. Okay, so yeah, maybe maybe as 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 big as a car or a, a small van, a minivan. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Um, folks, uh, continue to think about questions that you want to ask and please enter them in the chat box. Um, we're concerned about turning on microphones with this many people. We don't think that it would be great to have everybody's microphones on. Um, so our preference is that you enter your questions in the chat. And then while you are thinking of questions, we have a game we're going to play. Um, so um, Hi and welcome. My name is Christine and I have the privilege of working with uh, Dr. Bedford and with Sherelle. Um, and I'm going to start to share this for our game. Alrighty, so we're going to play the Mars Matches game. Everyone ready? Sherelle, are you ready? I am ready. Okay, so um, we have a series of pictures and we're going to ask your help in matching the right picture to the other picture. And we also have some trivia questions too. So the first one here, we have a picture of uh, Mars taken from a satellite. So taken from up above Mars and you might be able to see some clouds in there. And um, we have two other pictures here that are taken of Earth. Which of these two pictures do you think we should match to our picture of Mars? Should we match the top one, which is labeled A, or the bottom one, which is labeled B? And I'm going to give you five seconds to decide and enter your answer into the chat box. So you've got five seconds to decide whether you want it to be A or B. And our goal for this game is to see if, on average, we can have the right answers most of the time. If we can get 10 points as, as a whole team all together, if, if our team can get 10 points. So um, let's go ahead and let's get started. Five, you've got four seconds to enter your answer, three seconds to enter your answer, two seconds to enter your answer, and one second. And Ms. Sherelle, what did most people answer? The majority chose B. The majority chose B. Oh no, oh no, that's not the first time people have been uh, uh, fooled by that, unfortunately. Um, that does happen. The answer isn't B, I'm so sorry. The answer is A. B was mostly ice, not so much clouds, and A are clouds over the coast of, of the United States. So, we didn't get a point for that one. Nah, sorry, that happens. Let's see if we can get the next one right here. We've got a question for you. Clouds on, clouds on Mars, are they mostly made out of water or carbon dioxide or water and carbon dioxide? Mm. And again, we're going to give you five seconds to answer, four seconds to answer, three seconds to answer, two seconds, and one second. Ms. Sherelle, what did most people answer? There is a mixture, but there are actually more B's than C's. Uh, and again, we missed it. Um, it was C. It was water and carbon dioxide. Candace, would you care to make a comment on this? Yes. Yeah, so um, 
water and carbon dioxide. So this is because, well, for one, the atmosphere of Mars is very carbon dioxide rich. And also as Mars is so cold, you get carbon dioxide condensing too. Um, so this is the reason why it's a mixture of both. And um, there is water vapor in the clouds on Mars, right? They're, they're made out of water vapor. So some people don't think there's any water on Mars, but. All right, and we have a picture here of some sands on Mars. And we have a couple of other pictures from Earth. Which of these pictures should we match to Mars, A or B? We're gonna give you five seconds, four seconds, three, two, and one. And Ms. Jarrell, what did most people answer? Um, B. B, and so we got a point, yay! Yay, woo! Candace, would you care to talk about these pictures? Yes, so the second picture is from um, some of our field trials that we do in Iceland. So this is a good example of why we go to Iceland to study processes on Mars. It's because the crust on Iceland is very similar to the crust on Mars. And you get these really iron rich rocks like this one. So this is what the sand was eroded from and became it's called a basalt. It's very iron rich. Yeah. And, um, and I didn't turn this into a competition because they're clearly both rovers, but do you want to say something about here, about the two rovers and Iceland and on Mars? Yeah, so um, uh, one of the big things with Mars exploration is because of the time delay between the Earth and Mars, it's really important for rovers to have autonomous capabilities to help both inform themselves and get to a point where they can drive themselves but also to be able to help inform um, scientists here making the decisions. So part of the, the Sandy mission that I'm, a part, that I'm participating in is to trial different versions of autonomous software to help us um, reach this goal, to make, make the rovers more autonomous and make them more independent. And, require and that reminds me since, okay, so everyone remember, we're still playing the game, we've gotten a point, but, um, Sherelle, we have a couple of polls and one of them is about that time delay that Dr. Bedford just mentioned. Can you go ahead and bring up the poll about the time delay? And will it let you do that while my slides are showing? It will, it will. So folks, this is not part of the, the game, but we wanted to ask you, how long do you think it takes to communicate with someone who's on Mars? We're gonna give you uh, five seconds to answer this one. Yeah, we'll make it part of the game. We'll get a point if most people get it right. So is it 30 seconds? Is it about 15 minutes? Is it about two hours? Is it about a day? How long do you think it takes us to get a signal? And of course, it'll fluctuate a little bit depending on a number of variables. Five, four, Three, two, one, and let's go ahead and, and close the poll down, Sherelle, and share the answers. So people decided to um, answer in the chat box, which is oh, um, which is okay. optional. But the majority <laughs> of the responses were fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes! Yay, yeah, we got another point. Awesome. Okay, so we got a point there. Um, let's go ahead and let's continue. So we've got two points now. So here's a picture of Antarctica. And here's a couple pictures of Mars. Which one of these should we match to Earth? A or B? You've got five seconds, four seconds, three, two, and one. And what did most people answer? Well, it's half and half because I have four responses. So I have two selected that B and then two selected A. So it's actually half and half. And that one was a tricky question. The answer is both of them. So we got another point, folks. It doesn't matter which one you answered. As long as you answered, you got it right. So the answer is both. So um, they're both ice caps at, at Mars's North and South Pole here. Um, we've got it. So now that we're up to about three points, right? The northern ice cap on Mars, is it mostly frozen water, mostly frozen carbon dioxide, or mostly frozen water and carbon dioxide? So we've got another question for you here. And we're gonna give you five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second to answer. A lot of responses here. 
And, and what did indeed, most people- it was C. Indeed, the majority said C. Okay, so we got another point. Awesome. Yeah, the ice cap here on, on Mars's North Pole changes. Sometimes it's, it's pretty small and it's mostly just frozen water at that point uh, during Mars's summer for the Northern Pole. But when the, Mar- the, when the Mars North Pole has winter, then the, the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere freezes and so it gets much larger. We've got a picture of Mars here that shows some dust in the air. Which one of these pictures of the Earth should we match with it, A or B? You have five seconds, four, three, two, one. And what did most people answer? A. A is right. A is right. There's the Saharan dust storm that we had this summer, and there's dust on Mars. So now this one's a tour of, so we got it right. Another point. Yay! (laughs) <laughs> we've got a question here that's true or false can dust storms on mars cover the whole planet i'm going to give you five seconds to decide t or f true or false four three two one and what did most people answer i have true 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 yay great here you've got a picture that shows dust covering the whole planet and uh there's dust devils on mars and earth so which picture here should match the dust devil on Earth? A or B? Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. And what did most people answer? A. A. And it's both. So well, everybody got it right. I person, Mark. Mark chose both. Mark chose both. Awesome. Yes, he did. Congratulations, Mark. So, okay, we've got a few more here to go with. Some, so here's some sand dunes on Mars. Which one of these pictures of Earth should we match with the sand dunes on Mars, A or B? Five, four, three, two, one. And what did most people answer? A. A, they got it right. They got it right. Um, so Candace, do you want to say anything about sand dunes? You've been studying sand on Iceland and sand on Mars. So can you tell us anything about this? Yeah, so you notice, re- remember the pictures of the different sand grains that we had with Iceland and Mars and the fact that they were black because of the um, type of crust you had on Mars. So you see in the Sahara, the sand dunes are actually kind of yellow. And this is because the of the recycled crust on the Earth has got more of a... Um, is composed more of this mineral called quartz, whereas on Mars you have more volcanic glass and um, you have green mineral called olivine and there's the white minerals that you see here called sulfur. So this is what makes up the dunes on Mars and that's why you've got differences in colour. Awesome. And that's why those dunes are so dark in that picture then? Yeah, that's right. Awesome. Thank you. We've got a picture of a, an impact crater here on Earth in Chad. So which one of these pictures sh- from Mars should we match with this picture from Earth of an impact crater, A or B? We're going to give you five, four, three, two, one, and the answer is? B. B. Everybody got it right. Awesome. We got another point. So we've got a few more of these. Here's a Jezero Crater, a river delta so which one of these pictures from earth should we match with it a or b five four three two one and what did people answer b b is indeed right um dr bedford do you want to mention anything here about jezero crater yeah, so Jezero Crater is actually a really unique place on Mars because it's one of the few parts that we can see from orbit has carbonate minerals, which is really interesting. We, we don't really see that anywhere else. And it's been suggested by orbital studies that this carbonate could have formed in a kind of like lake beach-like environment. And um, so the reason for sending the astrobiology rover there is um, to see if we can see any early life forms like um, microbial mats like you get in the really early parts of, of the Earth's geological record in similar environments. Uh, we're running out of time and I want to leave you time to an- ask and answer questions so I'm going to do just two more. This one right now, what is the name of the rover that's going to land on Mars in Jezero Crater in 2021? Folks, you've got three seconds to answer, two seconds to answer, one second to answer, and the answer is... A, Perseverance. A, Perseverance. Great job. And then the last question I wanted to show you 
is this one. So um, we have a picture here in uh, the desert in China. And should we match A or B with it? Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second. And the answer is? That was a mixture, uh, but mostly A. Mostly A. Mm -hmm. So, um, Dr. Bedford, do you want to comment on this at all? Uh, yeah, it just it shows that ice um, isn't just present at the caps on Mars, also at the higher latitudes. And um, I think it's a really beautiful picture. It was taken by the Trace Gas Orbiter, which is a part of um, the European Space Agency's ExoMars mission that should have launched this year as well. But unfortunately, that one was delayed because of the pandemic. So hopefully, in a few more years, it'll have better success. Um. Uh Ms. Sherelle, have people asked other questions that we should be looking at? And uh, I'm going to let you answer that. I'm having to scroll back up from our from our game of this. Okay, um, I want to pick out um, a question. Someone asks. And while we're doing that, mm -hmm. Dr. Bedford, have you shared the rock yet? Oh, I'm sorry. I want to talk to, I want to bring up the question from Mark. Uh, from Mark. Uh, I found it. It says, can you talk more about the drone? Basically, what is its mission and what technology to prove? How different is flight on Mars compared to Earth? And what height is it expected to obtain? So the Mars copter is going to fly um, several meters above the surface. It's going to hopefully give us um, higher resolution imagery than what you can see from orbit. Um, and so we'll be able to map out in greater detail the area around the rover, which will really help to inform um, the scientists as to places that the rover should drive and investigate with its instruments. The big difference between drive, um, flying on Mars compared to the Earth is Mars is about 1% of the atmosphere compared to the Earth. So the atmosphere is really thin. As such, the Mars copter is going to need to be incredibly light, and also it needs big rotor blades that can spin incredibly fast so that it can um, fly up. And the main mission of the Mars copter is it's a technology demonstration. So it's just to kind of prove that we can do it. Um, so its mission will be successful if it makes a successful flight. Um, but after that, I think there's great opportunity for it to be incorporated into science operations procedures. And um, it's also, it's going to be a good kind of um, the information it returns and how useful that is will actually help to inform um, future planetary exploration missions such as Dragonfly that is also going to be a drone mission too. Um, yeah, so there was a, a question about the rocks um, and uh, so you, you, you have with you uh, a rock not from Mars but from Earth. You want to uh, share a little bit about it and uh, talk about how it compares to some of the rocks on Mars? Yeah, so this, this here is, um, is called a basalt. So this is a very iron and magnesium rich rock and it forms um, from magma that comes up and it doesn't have any influence of any of this recycling I mentioned earlier. Um, and so you can see here, if you look closely, you have these sort of white minerals and if you're lucky you might spot a green one as well. I think this one isn't as, there aren't as many olivine minerals in here, this one is mostly these white minerals called plagioclase feldspar. And then so these iron and magnesium rich rocks are what um, make up the majority of Mars and it's why the dunes are black. However, Mars is red because there's so much iron in these rocks when they're exposed to um, the atmosphere, they, they oxidize and become rusty. And so you can kind of see here that on this surface, it's a bit more weathered and it looks a little bit more red, like what you get on the surface of Mars. The reason why the dunes do not have this red appearance is because they're constantly active and constantly moving. Any weathering surface that formed is pretty nicely exfoliated away, like you'd be exfoliating your face. So, a little bit about the rock. This is from Iceland. This is from a lovely shield volcano called Skjaldbreiða um, near the field site I did. It's really cool. If you ever go there, yeah, 100% recommend seeing Skjaldbreiða. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you for, uh, thank you pr for our presenter, Dr. Bedford. Sherelle, I will let you take it away. Please share your camera and, and bring us home.
All right, everyone, thank you. And uh, would you please go ahead and give Dr. Candice Bedford a virtual applause for her presentation. Excellent job, Dr. Bedford. Thank you for your time, cooperation, and thank you all for patiently listening and the amazing questions that you asked. We hope that you join us next time we have a virtual program. Good night, everyone, and see you next time.